Okay everyone, today we're doing chirality, stereo centers, and RS isomers. And I have my itty bitty model to help with all the isomer crap. Okay, so chirality is spelled like this. And this is basically tying in with, is the molecule symmetrical or not, period. So our examples are to point out which molecule is chiral and which molecule is achiral. Achiral just means it's not chiral. So these are our two to pick from. I'm sorry that my lines are sloppy. Okay, so first we're going to see if it's symmetrical. And it can be a symmetrical around any origin. We're just trying to see if it's symmetrical or not. I feel like this one kind of stands out of this because it's like, oh, there's an OH on either side and then a CL down the middle. So this one is really symmetrical. And as a given already, we know that this molecule is not chiral. And this molecule, we're like, okay, well, if it's not this one, so that means it's this one. Kind of a poor example because it's just process of elimination if you know how to make a molecule look symmetrical or not. But we know that this molecule is chiral and here's why. This ties in with stereocenters as well. So a stereocenter is a molecule with a carbon in the middle that has four different substituents. And I'm not drawing like the wedges, dashes, whatever. So this is a carbon in the middle and it has an H over here, a chlorine over here, a bromine over here. This is like completely inaccurate this molecule would be chiral because it has four different substituents around it, okay? And this holds true if there's like an H over here, if there's a CH3, if there's a CH2, CH3, and like a bromine. It's the exact same case. These are different substituents, even though right now these both have carbons at their immediate ends for the bonds. So keep this in mind when you're looking at this one. You're like, bro, well, these are both carbons, right? And then we have an imaginary hydrogen and an oxygen. These look the same at first, but we branch out and we see, oh, so this one is a carbon and an oxygen, and this one is a carbon and a chlorine. So technically, these are four different substituents. Like That's what makes this molecule chiral, and this one is not chiral because this one has a carbon right here, a hydrogen, and this, I'm just going to draw this like C and then C. Okay, these look the same right now. But then it also has an O. And now we know that these are the same because they have an H at the end too. So these two substituents are the same, which makes this molecule not chiral. So that's important with chirality. And sorry, I'm going to erase. My whiteboard is so dirty, bro. Okay, so even with ring structures, we can tell what is chiral and what isn't chiral. Don't let the molecule scare you because we're just looking at symmetricality or not. Sorry. Okay, so these are both whatever, right? But we know automatically that this, if we cut this down the middle, not paying attention to this weird 3D part, the CL is right in the middle. So that means that this molecule is symmetrical and we know that it's not chiral. So again, process of elim elimination. We know that since this one isn't chiral, this one has to be, but look at this. We have a carbon stuff going over this way, carbon stuff going over this way, a chlorine and a hydrogen. It looks the same right here, right? But this one, we have a C, a C, and then like a bunch of other Cs. And this one is just a CH2 connected to other carbons. So you can check them if you want, but I feel like it's easiest and quickest to say, oh, this isn't symmetrical, this is, period, keep going. And when we go into bigger molecules, looking at where stereocenters are, then being able to go like quick, quick can also help you identify isomers even faster. But it's just step by step, we're going through it one at a time, so don't worry about it if it looks scary right now because Chirality ties in with stereocenters. I'm going to do that right now. So stereocenter, I already drew out what it was, so I'm not going to do it again. But that's what this part is. Sorry, my handwriting is not really that messy. Um, okay, so we're going to do an example and find all of the stereocenters present in the molecule. And yes, molecules can have more than one stereocenter. Just, you know, God trying to mess with us. Um... Okay, and we gotta draw our, our double bonds on our rings. Okay, a little double oxygen over here. And then we have an OR group and R. R 
are literally means like anything. It could be chlorine, it could be bromine, just don't let it freak you out. We just know that it's something else over there. So remember, chirality is, zero center is blah, 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 has four different substituents around a carbon. Pretty little flower, okay? So this one, kind of a given, this one is not chiral because there's a carbon over here and it's double bonded. When there's double bonds, that is like a freaking no. Like, it cannot be a stereo center if it has a double bond. Because if it's a double bond, it can't have four substituents. It can only have three. Because if you had something like this, there aren't four substituents. So anything with a double bond is an automatic no. Don't waste your time. You can double check it if you want, but I pinky promise that something with a double bond won't have four substituents. Period. Because god so he's he knows what he's doing right or she you know anyways um let's keep going so we know that these are not going to be stereo centers so let's keep going on to the other carbons there's a carbon right here carbon right here carbon right here and we're going to see if these have stereo centers okay so this one double bond no this one we've got an or group and then this carbon oxygen blah 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 thing over here We've got a carbon and an R group over here, and they've got an H right here. So since these, even though these are both carbons on the ends, all of these really, I'm oh, just kidding, this one and this one, we know that these are different substituents. So this right here is a stereo center. Yay. How about this one? This one, we've got imaginary H, an S, blah, 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 an R, blah, 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 and then another blah, 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 whatever. So we also know that these are four different substituents. So in this molecule, erasing all of my mess, we have two stereocenters, and none of these carbons are stereocenters. So that's what stereocenters are, and they're important with identifying whether or not a molecule is an R or an S isomer. And that just means that there, in some cases, are two different isomers. And the reason that they're different is because of their name, not necessarily because of their connectivity. Like there's a whole bunch of different kinds of isomers that we've already been over. But seroisomers means that there's like this kind and this kind, but they'll never be the same. Just because, you know, God doing his thing. So when we are identifying these isomers, it's really important to first identify where your stereocenter is. Because if you don't get the stereocenter right, then like you're literally not going to get the problem right, which is kind of scary. But very true. So we're going to draw our first example. Um, like this. Okay, so first we have to identify our stereo center. And I feel like this is kind of obvious because, you know, we like the little four substituents, but we can double check. So we've got an OH group over here, we've got an H group over here, we got a carbon, 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 and then we've got a carbon double bonded. So then Already, we already know that's going to be different. So these are our four substituents, okay? This is our stereo center. Now, we're going to draw our baby box. And I like to draw baby boxes because I feel like it's easier to visualize it instead of just going off of this. So you literally just draw a baby box. Look how cute. And then first, we're going to draw the first atom off of that box from each of these substituents. And we're going to draw the dashes and the wedges the exact same way. It'll just help in the future. Don't worry about it right now. So we got our dashes on this side, plain, plain, and then our wedge right here. Okay? So one atom at a time. This carbon is connected to an oxygen, a hydrogen, a carbon, and a carbon. That's all we're going to worry about right now. Oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, carbon. And now we need to rank these atoms in order of prioritization. And prioritizing means we just like bigger is better. Just think bigger is better. We want the biggest atom to be prioritized as number one. So out of these four, we know that hydrogen is the smallest, oxygen is the largest, and carbons are tied, obviously. So we've got one, bigger is better, and we know that hydrogen is our lowest, so it's already going to be number four. We don't have to wait until we figure out what these are. And now that we're at this point, we need to figure out, okay, which of these carbons is two or three, and vice versa. And to do that, I like to redraw my box again and just branch off as I go instead of doing it all at once. 
because it just helps my brain. If you want to do it and branch off as you go, then go for it. But I just like doing it this way. And for the next example on the next video, I'll do it where I just like branch off this way. But for this example, I'm going to do it the way I like it. Now, since we did these, these are tied. So I need to figure out like what the hell, two or three. And we just see what they're connected to next. So this carbon right here is connected to two other carbons. And since it's connected to two other carbons, it's also connected to a hydrogen because it has to have four substituents. Carbons always need four. And this is imaginary. I knew it was there. But just keep in mind that as long as it has four substituents, then you're good. This carbon is connected to a double bonded carbon right here. And keep in mind that double bonds, you draw them as two single bonds to the same molecule. So that means that this one is connected to two carbons, two carbons, see my fingers here, two carbons and another hydrogen because it's a carbon connected to a carbon double bonded, but it still only has two, one, two, three. So it needs to have a little H over here. That's just a little side note if that freaked you out. Don't worry about it. Okay. And they're still tied, right? So the next thing to check is, okay, what's next? This, you run out of space because we only have those two carbons and that's it. So that means that this one is automatically default to the number two slot. But if we wanted to redraw it, then I would redraw my box and keep going. So this one has another carbon. This has another carbon. Obviously, this one's bigger than this one. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, this part is weird. This is where you whip out your little model and you're like, okay, little model, we're going to figure out if you're R or S. R is clockwise. S is counterclockwise. Let me see. Mm, okay. Okay. So when we're looking at this, we want to see in what order do the numbers go after we put four in the back. So four is this hydrogen right here. And in the back means that it's a dash. So that means that we want our hydrogen in the back and everything else will just kind of fall into place. So just keep in mind that we want a hydrogen in the back, okay? So it doesn't matter what you designate as long as you designate it according to this picture. So right now we have our oxygen in the back. These two, wait, I'm so sorry. Oxygen in the back, our number three is pointing towards us, hydrogen is planar, and our other carbon group is planar. So this is where you look at your model. I really hope that you guys can see this. This is out at me, right? These two are planar because it's just in line with the paper. This is straight up and down in line with the paper. And then this green one that we can't really see, that one's in the back. So I'm holding my carbon, my number three right here. And you can also kind of flip it like this so it matches your picture. So I have my carbon right here. I have my hydrogen up here. These are my two planar molecules. My hydrogen's up here. This carbon is down here. And this oxygen is back. Okay? So I've got one, two, three, four. We want our fourth one in the back. Okay? So I'm going to flip this. Let me just double check my numbers. One. One is red, two is green, three is white, and four is blue. And this will just help you keep all of them straight. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it. I want my four to be here. So I'm gonna flip it like this. Okay, stay with me. One is red, two is green, three is white, and our four is in the back. So that means that right now, our four is in the back, our one, wait, four is in the back, our green was two, that's one of our planar, and then another one that's planar is our red one. Red, mm. hold on, I'm drawing this wrong, I'm so sorry. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna draw it right here. This is making more sense to me right now. So. Four and 
one, two, three. So we're looking at it like a Newman projection like this. Just look at it like this. One, two, three. And this is where we talk about our circles, right? So our circles are going one, two, three in order. And this is what we mean when we're identifying as R and S because since this is going counterclockwise like I drew, that means this is an S isomer, period. And that's the end. Sorry that this video is so long. I'm sorry that this was like weird, but the way that you got from here to here, one more time. Okay, try to keep my numbers the same with my colors. Okay, we lined up this with our model because our model is helpful. Oops, it was like this. Okay, oxygen's in the back. Our three is our wedge pointing at us. Our four is our hydrogen pointing up. And our two is this out. I picked my colors. I picked my numbers based on these. It doesn't matter what you assign as long as it's accurate with your picture. So I could have easily made green four or blue four, doesn't matter. As long as it makes sense to you, that is key. So now, we want the four in the back. We want a four to be dashed. So I took my blue, which is my four, and I turned it like this. Doesn't matter how you turn it, as long as you turn it to make four in the back. So now I've got my blue in the back, that's my four, and I've got my red one, in the front, two, green, three, white. And you'll notice that I didn't exactly change it the same way I did last time because I, I turned it a different way. I just twisted my arm a different way, but I still got the same answer because if the four is in the back, as long as you turn this, like it literally doesn't matter which way you turn it because you're red, green, white, one, two, three. So that's why this is counterclockwise because our numbers are going bigger in this direction. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to do two other examples in the next video and I apologize if this video is so long. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions and I hope this helped.